we found out she had a pretty voice, didn't she? And it takes a lot, you know, when you're around a, your own folk. It's easy to say them speeches and sing those songs. But then when you amplify it, <laughs> amen, I applaud. Let's applaud all of them for a job well done. Now, usually this is casual Sunday. But it's Easter Sunday, too. And we dare not tell them to wear their blue jeans when they don't buy them some new outfits. <laughs> ah, if you don't mind, we'll be on out of here in just a few minutes. I think they got some eggs out there for them babies to find and find all of them or we'll, or we'll know what they didn't find. <laughs> Amen. Turn with us, y'all. Some of y'all ain't even smiled. Y'all ain't smiled all service. Amen. But hopefully after this message, you'll have a reason to smile. Amen. Because, you know, that risen Christ, if he were dead, he wouldn't have woke you up this morning. <laughs> Clothed you in your right mind. And, man, you're looking for this or that, but just him opening your eyes was a blessing all by itself. And when we stop worrying about having an outfit, worrying about getting an Easter basket, worrying about getting on one of them Cadbury bunnies, man, when we start thinking about the reason for this season, Man, when we'd have walked in this place, the roof would have exploded. Oh, man, oh, man. I guess I'm just talking to myself this morning. Yeah. Turn with us to Luke, chapter 23. Still in the seven sayings of Jesus, the final saying. If you just turn to just one little verse, verse 46. Because maybe some of y'all watching y'all watches and, and y'all that, that chicken is calling y'all. Fish or whatever it is. Amen. Oh, somebody got a roast? <laughs> have mercy. Amen. I'll have you back at that crock pot in a little bit. Yeah. Luke chapter 23 and verse 46, coming from the King James Version of God Holy Writing. If you have another translation, that's quite all right. We're going to wind up on the same road because it is the word of God. If you have it, say amen. amen. If not, say wait a minute. Amen. We're waiting. We're waiting. Amen. Luke chapter 23, verse 46. I know some hands ain't faster than others. Hey, that's all right. We want you to get everything that's on the table today. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 23, starting at verse 46. I think we all got it now. Amen. And it reads like this. And then Jesus had cried. When Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. And he hanged, and having seen this, he gave up the ghost. May God have a blessing to the reading of his word. Now you talk with you briefly. With the aid of the Holy Spirit, from the thought, you're in good hands. You are in good hands. In, 19, in the 1950s, all state came up with the slogan that you are in good hands with all state. No matter what kind of incident happened to your vehicle, if you chose all state, it had your back. 63 years have gone by. And just last year, all state dropped their slogan. But I want to encourage you here this morning that there are some more hands that you can put your whole life in. 
Yeah, yeah not just your sure. automobile, your house insurance, your life insurance. Best, I'm talking about your eternal insurance. All right. Yeah, you can put them in God's hands. And this is one, uh, uh, one insurance company and good hands that you can hold in that will not lapse on you. Today, resurrection morning, let us transform our mind and our hearts to Calvary. Matter of fact, if we will be honest, let us start off at the temple. Yes, Jesus had been placed on the cross at 9 o'clock in the morning. Three hours had passed, hours of excruciating pain and physical agony. Yes, uh, Jesus had went through a very horrific ordeal. Hanging on a cross, this crucifixion process would cause gravity to set in. It would cause the lungs to deflate, sometimes even collapse. And it took a lot of strength to try and pull yourself against gravity. Yeah, and so as Jesus hung there for these three hours here, noontime came. At the height of the day, a eerie darkness falls across the whole land for three hours. Now how this darkness occurred, we don't know. But we clearly know that God caused this to happen. Yeah, all of nature seemed to mourn over the stark tragedy of the death of God's son. Yeah, darkness here on Calvary was both physical and spiritual. Yeah, for a while, nature mourned. This was also the time where darkness reigned. Yeah, but as we look here in the temple, something significant and symbolic was occurring. Yes, right uh, in the inner part that we call the holy place. Now in the temple, it was broke up in three parts. Firstly, was the court of the people. Secondly, it was the holy place where only the priests could enter. And thirdly, it was the most holy place where the high priest only could enter one time of year to atone for the people's sin. Now, the most holy place was where the Ark of the Covenant resided. Yeah, and, and the God's presence would rest behind the veil. Yes, as Jesus suffered here on the cross and darkness had covered the land, this thick veil hanging in the temple tore in two. Yes, the veil was uh, torn and was one of the, that would close off, yes, the most holy place from view. Symbolically, this curtain separated a holy God from sinful people. Yeah, the writer of Hebrews saw this tearing of the curtain as God's way of removing the barrier between himself and us. Now we can approach a holy God directly through Jesus Christ. No longer do we have to wait uh, to see if the priest is all right. No longer do we have to see if they have to pull him and drag him out. No longer do we have to have uh, sacrificial lambs and bullocks and oxen anymore. But all we can do is go to Christ and, and go to him directly. You know, now, as we approach our awesome God, God didn't want to reside behind a curtain, but he wanted to reside in his people. Yeah, no longer does he stand behind a curtain waiting for us to come to him once a year. 
Yeah, but now we can come to him on a daily basis. He doesn't care how many times we come to him just as long as we come to him. You know, you got some people that are in church that when altar call is given and people come to the mercy seat, oh, y'all don't know nothing about that, or come to the front, they got the audacity to say, look at them. They were up there last week. Well, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter how many times they come. Lord, if they got that relationship with God, let them come. Matter of fact, you need to get off your seat. Stop having your hard heartness and bring your behind down here. So God can work on you. Mm. Jesus begins to shout. And like I told you on previous Sunday, this was no mere whimper. This was not a cry that, 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 that all the wind of him, it took every breath to, to scream it. But Jesus was letting him know that the last week he said it's finished. This week he's crying again. Yes, he's crying out loud saying, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. Yes, uh, in commending his spirit to the Father Jesus died. Yes, fulfilling the words of Psalm 31 and 5. Yes, Jesus didn't faint. Yeah, he didn't even because he didn't even go unconscious to revive later. Yes, yes, he breathed his last. He died a human being, mm -hmm. voluntarily, mm -hmm. sacrificially, mm -hmm. and in a place of sin. Right. Yes, uh, yes, at this, at this captain that was standing at the cross, who was in charge of carrying out this execution, upon seeing what had happened, Realized that Jesus was no mere person. Yeah, apparently this soldier had carried out other execution. Yeah, but he never had ever experienced. Yeah, one like this one. This Gentile soldier. Yeah, understood something that most of the Jewish nation had missed. Yes, he surely knew that this man was innocent. Yeah, and his, his thoughts were confirmed when he took his spirit and spirit Jesus in the side. And blood and water came running out. Yeah, I heard this soldier say, surely this man was the son of God. Yeah, he was affirmed to believe that this was God's only begotten son. Yeah, this captain uh, understood that Jesus hadn't deserved the things that he received uh, ever since they had arrested him. Yeah, but Jesus bore uh, all these pain with dignity, courage, and a word of forgiveness. Yeah, he said, Father, forgive me, for they know not what they do. And I believe that not only did the sinner, the sinner, the thief on the cross, no, not only did he receive the Spirit of God, but this captain did too. Because there's no way that you can have a thought like that and have it in a truthful statement. Yes, the miracles that occurred out there on Calvary's hill. Yeah, the darkness that was all around. The earthquakes that happened on Golgotha here. The dead people walking are in Jerusalem. Yes, and the tearing of the veil. Yeah, it lets us know that Jesus was no mere man. Yeah, but Jesus uh, was God's only begotten son. After seeing all of these events, these people thought that Jesus was about to come down. 
offer up the cross and be their Messiah. But he didn't do it. Yes, he stayed upon the cross. He died. Yes, he died. Yes, he put his head in the locks of his shoulder. Yeah, while the onlookers that were there were looking for him to come down, they realized that Jesus remained right there. Yes, he died, but they went home in a sorrowful spirit. Why did they go home in a sorrowful spirit? Because now they realize who Jesus was. Yeah, don't let it be too late for you because you don't recognize who Jesus is. Some of us say, I got plenty of time. Yeah, but the next second ain't promised to you. Yeah, somebody might say that I'm young and I got to wait till I get old. But oh, if you cut on the television, y'all ain't making it too old. Yeah, if you make it to 40, that's a blessing. Yeah, but I want to let you know that don't put off today for tomorrow. Oh, because tomorrow ain't promised. You ought to choose God today while the blood is running warm in your veins. Choose God today before your tongue gets stuck to the roof of your mouth. Choose God today before your eyes are closed. Yeah, on this side of joy. They went home. They went home sorrowfully. But I'm so glad that it didn't end there. Joseph begged for his body to put him in a borrowed tomb. Yes, they took our Lord and our Savior and put our rock inside of a rock. He put our rock in front of a rock. They put soldiers there to guard the body. It was all right that he stayed there all day Friday. He stayed there all day Saturday. But early Sunday morning, somewhere between midnight and daybreak, there was a rumbling that was down in the graveyard. Yeah, rumbling like no other ever before. Yeah, the rock began to roll the rock away. A right. rock stepped out of the rock. The right. rock that was Jesus said, death, where's your sin? Grave, where's your victory? I got all power in my hand. And I want to petition to somebody here today. That, oh, if you're looking for somebody to hold your trunk, Jesus is the best hand that you can give them to. Maybe there's somebody in here that's worried about the economy. Just put it in God's hand. Maybe there's somebody in here that's worried about where your next meal is coming from. Just put it in God's hand. Yeah, husband and wife ain't getting along. Just put it in God's hand. Children acting crazy. Yeah, put it in God's hand. Yeah, you don't know that they might foreclose on your house. They've been calling you about late notices on your vehicles. But put it all in God's hand. He's able. Why don't you come to him? Today you might be cast a shot. But your next second ain't promised to you. It would be a great day here on resurrection morning. That if God is talking to your heart, he's, in, he's not in the grave no more, y'all. He's standing with outstretched arms saying, whosoever will, let him come. You ain't got to have no price. Just come. And as the choir is saying, you can walk down those aisles and he's standing with outstretched arms looking for you. 
Why don't you come? Come on. Why don't you come? While the blood is running warm in your veins, why don't you come? Why don't you come? Don't wait too late. Oh, y'all looking good out there. But I guarantee you can look a whole lot better with Jesus in your life. Aren't you tired of getting beat up? Aren't you tired of trying to work this thing out on your own? Why are, are you tired of struggling, letting the devil knock you down on one end and the other? Why don't you give it over to Jesus? The man that can handle your problem. Why don't you give it over to Jesus? I know y'all ready to eat. If you that hungry, you can leave on out those doors. But there's somebody that needs Jesus. Need him in their life. Come on, baby. They need him. I, I, I'm here. I ain't got it all together. I'm your pastor, but I ain't got it all together. But I know a man that can get it all together. His name is Jesus. Jesus, the man that died for us, the man that set us free, he saved my soul. How do you know he rose? He rose in me. And he can rise in your life today. He can rise in your life today. Come on. Oh, yeah. Maybe there's someone while Deacon's getting the report. Maybe there's somebody that needs prayer. Why don't you come? Now, a lot of folks, y'all, y'all standing right there. And I ain't talking to y'all if y'all got it all together. But when you need help bad enough, if you are drowning, it doesn't matter who throws you the life and preserve it. All you need to be is safe. And then maybe there's somebody in here when it gets bad enough in your life that you get put flat on your face. And the only way you can do is look up. I don't want you to get to that point. But I want you to give God a chance right now. Let him work out those problems that you've been trying to figure out. In the mighty name of Jesus. But then some of y'all still ain't going to move. But guess what? He can work out your problem right where you are. You might be doing it in secret. But I guarantee you God can reward you openly. All heads bowed. All eyes closed. Rich and eternal Father, Lord, we come right now. Lord, we thank you first of all for your many blessings that you have bestowed on us this day. But Lord, we come to a petition right now that we need your help. Lord, some come that their soul be saved. Some might be coming to join. Some might be coming to have added strength. And some are sick or tired of being sick and tired. They're tired of the devil seem like beating up on them. They're tired of it seeming like the devil is getting the best hand. And Lord, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, we stand together. That we plant everything that we have at your feet. And Lord, we want you to work it out. Matter of fact, you done already worked it out. Lord, you were just waiting on us to bring it to you. And Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for what you've done. It should have been us that were beating all night long. It should have been us that had no crown of thorns on our head. It should have been us that were nailed to the cross. But you traded places with us. And Lord, now we are, we, we want, we are no enemies no more, but we are, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, I thank you right now. There are some diagnoses that somebody got from the doctor. 
but they need a second opinion from a doctor that never lost a case. Lord, we thank you for those who left and went off in a foreign land, other states. And Lord, you blessed them to make it back. Lord, we thank you for those who went in surgery. And Lord, you guided the doctor's hand. And here they are standing in front of us today giving the praise to God. Lord, thank you for our, our sisters of the church that, and brothers of the church that have come back. They've been here, but they are standing and sitting in our congregation today. Lord, we thank you right now for all that you've done, especially up on Calvary. But I thank you most of all, we thank you most of all, for early Sunday morning, early resurrection morning, you got up with all power in your hand. And you still got that power. Power to heal. Power to be forgiven. Power to set folk free. And Lord, whatever they're asking for, I know it's already done. You said ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and if you hear me knock and open up, and I'll abide with you and you with me. And he's not like our friends. He won't be there just part of the way, and then when, when things get too heavy, they run off. But he'll be there through the thick and thin, and when the fire is cut up, he knows how to make a means of escape for you. And Lord, I thank you right now for being an awesome God. I thank you right now for being a forgiving God. I thank you right now for being a loving God, a God that is still spreading his love around and that love that runs from heart to heart and breath to breath. Lord, we ask you to bless Morningstar and everybody that's in the sound of my voice that we will be able to stand boldly and proclaim that Jesus rules and super rules, that he's king of kings and Lord of lords. Lord, I thank you for Christianity because we are the only religion that we can say that our God came down in flesh, dwelled among us, died for us, rose on that third day morning and still alive, telling the story on our behalf. And Lord, we thank you right now for being God. Lord, keep your arms of protection around us because we don't know what might happen when we walk out those doors. But I do know one thing. We serve a God that can hold and is holding the future. And if we give it over to him, he'll order our steps. We thank you. Lord, we praise you. And Lord, we lift you up. In the mighty, miraculous name of Jesus, let the church say amen. amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.